Hi friends, today we'll be discussing the ascent of sap in plants. In earlier video, we have already seen pathways of water movement, different pathways of water movement, especially the radial conduction of water through root system. In this video tutorial, we will try to understand the actual conduction of the water. As you know the definition by ascent of sap, it means the upward transport of water from roots to the aerial parts of the plant. And you know water is absorbed both actively as well as passively through radial conduction by root hairs. This we have already seen. Now there is an upward movement, upward transport of water which occurs through axial conducting system. We have an axial conducting system comprising of xylem, xylem which is a complex tissue having xylem vessels, tracheids, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. So we have to see that water reaches to the top or the tips of the tall trees. Even you have a, a tall tree of 400 feet, redwood tree sequoia, where water reaches to the top of it. But you know the major portion of the water which is absorbed by the roots is lost through stomatal transpiration. There are different theories of ascent of sap. They have been classified as vital force theories, root pressure theory and physical theories. We will discuss them one by one. Vital force theories have been suggested by many investigators like Westermeer in 1883, uh, Gordlewski 1884, Jansi 1887, Sir J. C. Bose 1923 and they believe that the ascent of sap in plants or upward movement of water in plants is under the control of vital forces in the city. And the proponents of these theories account ascent of sap to the activity of living cells surrounding xylem. There are two living cells, one is the xylem parenchyma and the medullary rays. Living parenchyma cells with xylem vessels strengthened their viewpoint because we have seen that xylem is a complex tissue, it has xylem vessels, with them there are also present the xylem parenchyma cells. But due to lack of experimental proof, modern botanists discard the vital theory concept but we will discuss one or two concepts just for the sake of understanding what the theory, theory was. Goldwiski relay pump theory. According to this theory, water rises up in a satire case like fashion. That is, ascent of sap takes place due to the pumping activity of living xylem parenchyma cells, vital force. It is facilitated to due to rhythmic changes in osmotic pressure of xylem parenchyma and medullary ray. Living parenchyma cells at lower end absorbs water from adjacent xylem vessels due to osmosis and water rises up in these cells due to air or atmospheric pressure. Finally, same water is pumped back into xylem vessel at higher level due to low osmotic pressure. This process is repeated many times and water rises upward in the xylem. Jansi in 1887 supported, suggested the role of medullary ray cells. Same way, medullary ray cells are the living cells and they are responsible for helping the transport of the water from vessel at the lower end and then putting it back at the higher end. In the medullary rays, water moves due to protoplasmic streaming. But vital force uh, theory concept was experimentally rejected by Strasburger in 1891, 1893, who demonstrated that ascent of sap continued even after living cells were killed with poison or treating with high temperature. There is rate difference of ascent of sap 
and the living cells and even the ascent of sap continued when there were no living cells you can it can be explained with this simple diagram this is the vessel the sap within it these are the xylem parenchyma cells which are connected by, by means of pits lateral pits so water here enters inside the uh, enters inside the parenchyma cell from the lower end of the vessel here it has an high osmotic pressure once water enters there its osmotic pressure is becoming low because more water enters there that time water is given at the upper end back to the vessel and then similarly the next parenchyma cell takes the water at the lower layer level and due to their osmotic potential changes the water is given back at the top in the way the water moves in a zigzag fashion and reaches to the top but this theory has been rejected because there is no correlation between the two even when parenchyma cells or medullary cells are killed or heat treated still there is a continuous a continuation of the ascent of sap there is one more theory that's called the pulsation theory it was it's also called the pulsation theory of bose sir j c bose 1923 was one of the supporter of vital force theory he suggested that the ascent of sap takes place due to pulsatory activity of innermost cortical cells he did an experiment with sitem of desmodium what bose did he took a potted plant this is the potted plant and he took a probe probe had a needle within it needle is being inserted after screwing it it has been uh, made to touch the endodermal layer that's the inner part of the cortical layer and through a circuit it is connected with the upper part of it and there is a the galvanometer which is which is uh, attached here and to to see the deflection in the galvanometer bose noticed that this galvanometer showed an oscillation and the oscillations were rapid they they got showed rapid increase when probe was inserted from surface to the deeper layer of the stems that is from the epidermal cells and to the deeper cortical cells there was an rapid increase in the oscillation these oscillations were thought by bose to be due to pulsatory activities of the innermost cortical cells these cells absorb water from the outside and pump the same into the vessels this theory was rejected as many workers could not repeat his experiment no correlation was found between pulsatory activity and the ascent of sap pulsatory activity could not account for the observed rate of ascent of sap and the ascent of sap was found to be very high and rapid which could not be supported by the pulsatory theory one more theory that's called the root pressure theory root pressure is a positive hydrostatic pressure which is developed within tracheids of xylem as a result of metabolic activities of roots it helps in upward movement of sap into the shoot system here roots act as active organs maintaining high solute potential in cell sap using atp or metabolic energy root pressure shows diurnal rhythm owing to diurnal salt transfers in in the xylem sap roots accumulate salt under high metabolic activity and exude the same into xylem sap under low metabolic activity root pressure usually occur when soil has a high water potential and plant show low evapotranspiration rates it was measured and was explained with this experiment a plant irrigated plant potted plant it was cut here and the stem of that 
was connected through a rubber tubing with a mercury manometer. This is the mercury manometer, which is digital, uh, which is having the graduated scale here. And through rubber tubing, the stem was connected with it. And it was put in a stand and in a fixed position. Root pressure can be easily observed and measured when a freshly cut stem of highly irrigated pot plant, potted plant is attached through rubber tubing with glass mercury manometer. Now, what you will see, there will be a rise in the water. That rise in the water will push the mercury up. You will measure what is the overall rise in the mercury column. This rise in the level of mercury inside graduated class, uh, graduated class U-tube indicates the root pressure. Because there is no aerial pressure, that means the water has been pushed up because of the pressure developed in the roots. That's why it is called as the root pressure. It is a positive hydrostatic pressure. Root pressure ranges from 3 to 5 atmospheres only, which is insufficient to raise water to the top of the tall tree. So, root pressure in the range of 6.4 and 10 atmospheres have also been reported in some plant species. But root pressure is not universal. No root pressure is observed in some actively transpiring plants because you will see root pressure mostly developed in those plants which are, which are growing in an highly water uh, locked condition which are less transpiring but you will see root pressure is because in actively transpiring plants no root pressure is observed and moreover you will see the coniferous tall trees uh, no root pressure is observed there because coniferous tall trees are less transpiring plants and they should have developed a root pressure but it is rarely observed there. So root pressure may be basically a contributory factor for ascent of sap in some small plants. It cannot be a major contributory factor in the ascent of sap, but it can be a contributory factor for small plants ascent of sap in small herbaceous plants. It may help in ascent of sap in slowly transpiring herbaceous plants growing in highly irrigated soils. Plants experience high magnitude of root pressure during humid nights due to low evapotranspiration. It's possibly a defense mechanism relieving water tension in xylem and it can help in removal of air bubbles in xylem vessels. So it's a positive pressure. It can be a sort of a defense mechanism because it can help in relieving the water tension in the xylem, which we will see later on. There is a physical force theory. To explain this mechanism, ascent of sap in xylem, different physical force theories were given. Capillary theory, chain theory, inhibition theory, cohesion tension theory by Dixon and Jolly, 1894. This Dixon and Jolly theory, which is called as a cohesion tension theory, is widely accepted while as rest are discarded. So we will discuss the cohesion tension theory, which is also called as the transpirational pull theory. This is the most widely accepted physical theory, originally proposed by Dixon and Jolly in 1895 and supported by Renner, Curtis Clerk, Werner and Kramer and the, in 1960. These are the different scientists who have supported this theory. We'll discuss it in few points. You know first, you have a, you have a plant. Plant has a root system, shoot system and plant, stem, petiole and leaf. So continuity is there. From root hairs to sub cavity of leaves, water forms a continuous column in plants because of its such proper properties. We have already discussed the properties of water. Water molecule due to cohesive properties stick to each other by hydrogen bonding. 
the hydrogen bond is weak but when number of hydrogen bonds of molecules are there it remains uh, in a stabilized position due to strong mutual force of attraction or cohesive forces water forms a continuous column with high tensile strength the magnitude of this force is high up to 350 and more than that 350 atmospheres so water column remains unbroken under forces of gravity or other obstructions because of high magnitude of cohesive force between the water molecules second property of the water is adhesion or adhesive properties here is a cohesion means cohesion between cohesive force between the water mutual water molecules like uh, similar molecules adhesion is between the different that is between the water and the other types of the molecules as we have lignin cellulosic cell walls of xylem vessels have a strong affinity or adhesion for water molecules a strong adhesive force exists between the walls of the xylem vessels and water this water tends to stick to the vessel wall see when the water tends to stick to the vessel wall and the lower water molecules will be in continuity by means of the hydrogen bonding it moves in the form of a column so water moves in the form of a column in xylem vessels due to transpiration loss in losses in the aerial foliage you see substomatal cavity water is lost through stomata there is a substomatal cavity when there is a loss of the water in substomatal cavity the mesophyll cells of leaves show reduction in their water potential that is they have a low water potential and increase in osmotic potential they will have high solute potential since mesophyll cells are connected with the xylem cells of the midrib and the xylem cells of the midrib are connected with the xylem of the stem water moves from adjacent xylem vessels of leaf midrib into walls of mesophyll cells the xylem vessel in turn draw water from xylem of the main stem because they are in continuous column as a result a negative hydrostatic pressure or a tension is developed in the entire water column this tension is transmitted along the vessels of the stem to the vessels of the roots you will see a simple mechanism in a pipe if you leave the water at the one end of the pipe you will see the water will be dragged because of the continuity in the column water will be pulled so the tension is transmitted along the vessel of the stem to the vessel of the roots and the water is pulled upward in the form of continuous water column to reach the transpiring surface that is to reach to the leaves the combined pressure also called as transpirational pull it pulls of the water column means now the, there is there is a creation there is a pull which is created by means of a transpiration which pulls of the water column to great height through xylem it has been measured in the range of minus 10 to minus 30 bars sufficient enough to pull water column to the tree tops the tops of the tree finally root hairs absorbs water from the soil solution because whenever there is a loss there is a continuity in the water column when there is a loss of the water from the aerial foliage a tension is created and then ultimately it goes down to the roots where roots absorb water from soil solution which is always with high hydrostatic pressure since force for the entry of water into roots is created in aerial foliage roots only acts as passive apparatus let's explain it with the help of this diagram as we have a leaf continuity through pure petiole and then stem and and with the root system soil shoot and air so there is a continuity spec soil plant air continuum there's a continuity now we will have seen that there can be a stomatal transpiration here let us see the anatomy of the leaf first as you know the leaf has an upper epidermis leaf has a lower epidermis these are the palisade cells these are the lower palisade cells and between them there are mesophyll cells which are spongy uh, mesophyll cells 
and then there is a xylem, xylem and phloem. And the lower epidermis usually has the stomata, which is guarded by guard cells, and there is a substomatal cavity. So whenever there will be a stomatal transpiration, the substomatal cavity is with water. There will be less water available in the substomatal cavity. That will in turn absorb water from the mesophyll cells, and the mesophyll cells will absorb water from the xylem. So there will be a continuity of the water from the xylem, that is the xylem of the petiole. And this xylem of the petiole is connected with the, xyl with the xylem of the sitem. As you know, xylem is made up of tracheids. There are vessels. These are the trache. This is the vessel. These are the tracheids. And xylem vessel is in the is 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 having a continuity because there are no uh, walls between the cells. It's in the form of a tube, as a as a capillary tube. So whenever there is a loss of water in this xylem, that loss of water it will take water from this xylem xylem vessels and within these xylem vessels there will be a tension that tension will be a negative pressure tension will be developed along this water column that will go into the xylem of the roots and the xylem of the roots then there are present pericycle endodermis passage cells cortex and then this is the root here and then the water will be absorbed from this so as to maintain the continuity so there will be an ascent of sap because of the transpirations within these aerial foliages. And water will be absorbed by the roots. Roots will act as a passive apparatus because the force for entry of water or energy is in the form of a solar energy. So this is how uh, ascent of sap is taking place in an angiospermic plant. What are the evidences in support of it? Kramer in 1937 observed that rate of water absorption approximately equals to rate of transpiration. So, water potential of leaves at tree tops have been recorded to be minus 30 bars, which is sufficient for ascent of sap. Such a low water potential is enough to create pulling pressure, which can overcome the gravitational forces and resistances offered by the capillaries of the xylem vessels. So it's creating a sufficient pressure which can help for the ascent of sap. Water oozes out from cut end of highly transpiring plant showing that it is under tremendous negative pressure or tension. Development of expected large negative pressure within xylem elements have been measured by direct pressure probe techniques. Dendrographic studies, the studies of the systems of sitem revealed a diurnal variation in sitem contractions. Jur during high transpiration period, noon, trunk diameter in the upper part of the sitem was greatly reduced, and which, which was caused due to narrowing of the trachery elements. This shrinkage was due to tension or negative pressure developed in water column. So dendrographic studies also support the transpirational theory. Leaf cells show diurnal variation in their osmotic potential. It is maximum in the afternoon, possibly due to heavy transpiration losses because there will be more solutes available, less water, which in turn minimizes water content of the leaf cells. Such correlations indicate a possible relationship with ascent of sap. The cells sap in xylem can have cohesive strength of 47 to 207 atmospheres, which is sufficient to sustain large negative tension and which can prevent any possible disruption of water column. Xylem conduits due to their secondary wall thickenings and lignification can sustain and resist a very high tensions necessary to pull water to the tops of the tall trees. It is an adaptation to counterbalance the tendency to collapse. So the system is such, the thickenings in the xylem vessels is such that uh, there is an adaptation that it can sustain the high tensions. So this is a structural support, uh, anatomical support towards the uh, transpiration of pull theory because there is a very high tension developed within them. It was to sustain it, it, it can, the adaptation is to counterbalance the tendency to collapse. 
Under high tension, the water in xylem is in a physically metastable state. The breaking strength of degassed water is greater than 30 megapascals, while as estimated tension of 3 megapascal is sufficient to pull water up to the tallest tree. Thus, water within xylem remains within limits to prevent destabilization. This theory gets direct support when compared with the pore spot experiment. What is the pore spot experiment? We will see here. This pore spot experiment, you have a beaker which is filled with mercury. There is a tube, glass tube. That glass tube is filled with water. And then there is a, a spongy tissue which is perforated here. Or a pore spot is there. So it has number of perforations. It's filled with water. And then it is taken and dipped into the mercury beaker. Kept in a stand. And then is then kept in a uh, direct sunlight. Due to sunlight here, there will be evapotranspirations. Whenever there will be an evapotranspiration, because of the continuity or the cohesive properties of the water, this is in the form of a column. There will be a negative pressure developed in it. When such pressure develops in the water due to the losses or due to the evapotranspiration through porous, uh, porous part, the mercury is pulled. It's a direct so rise in mercury into water filler tube is noticed, which indicates that water has been lost due to evapotranspiration through pores, and this loss produces a tension in the water column, which in turn pulls mercury from the beaker. So this is the direct support towards the cohesion tension theory or the transpiration pool theory. One objection, the only one refutable objection to this theory is introduction of air bubbles within xylem vessels and tracheids which may break the continuity of a water column. You have xylem vessels. Xylem vessels are here connected together. So sometimes a air bubble can be, which is also called as a cavitation, it can be filled with gas filled vessel will be there. So it can break the continuity of the water. But it is suggested that there are multiple uh, vessels. If there is a break in continuity of the column, the water can move from the other side of the uh, vessel. It can avoid it. So this is one of the objections which is called as the uh, cavitation. Uh, let us discuss it a bit more. Cavitation or embolism in plants. The phenomena of bubble formation from dissolved gas, gases in a liquid under high negative pressure or tension is called as cavitation or embolism. It occurs in liquids which are in motion and where pressure of liquid falls below its vapor pressure. Cavitation is induced either by water citrus or by winter freezing in xylem of vascular plants. Under severe water citrus, tension of the water in xylem becomes high as a result of dissolved air expands and fill up the xylem or tracheids in the form of air bubble. So there can be under severe water citrus conditions. Under severe water citrus, the high tensions of water in the xylem vessels pulls air through microscopic pores in the xylem cell walls by a phenomenon known as air seeding. The gas bubble can also be formed in xylem conduits due to winter freezing, which can reduce the solubility of gases. Several studies have shown that when xylem is frozen under tension, the extensive cavitation occurs after melting of ice. The gas bubble may enter the water column due to variation in atmospheric temperature and soon after its formation, bubble expands because gas cannot resist tensile forces. The cavitation introduces breaks in water column of plants, which can be detected with proper equipment. The water column breaks can be heard as pulses, presumed to be formed as a result of formation and expansion of air bubbles within the xylem. There are two main methods for detection of xylem cavitation, namely acoustic and hydro hydraulic detection. The breaks in the water column can prevent water transport in the xylem and can prove disastrous to the plant. 
Schillendrid 1961 overruled the consequences of cavitation on water transport in the xylem by suggesting that xylem has several alternative rows of vessels as I have already shown in the figure and tracheids placed one above the other with perforated end plates and interconnected with adjacent xylem elements by number of pits on the lateral walls. The anatomy is such. One gas bubble does not stop water flowing wholly as water can also traverse through neighboring elements through pits. Further, gas bubble cannot spread far and cannot pass through the small pores of pit membranes. Plant adopt various strategies to avoid damages caused by cavitation. In herbaceous plants during humid nights, gas bubbles can be eliminated under the influence of high hydrostatic pressure. We have already discussed in root pressure theory. Developed inside the xylem. Such pressures generate positive xylem pressure which reduces tension in the xylem water. It leads to shrinkage of the gas bubble and causes the air to dissolve back into the solution of the xylem. It has been seen in sugar maple and woody vines. Many plants can also minimize the consequences of xylem cavitation by forming new xylem annually by secondary growth. New vessels and tracheids replace the older cavitated and non-functional ones, thus restore the hydraulic conductivity of these plants. Though not yet completely understood, recent studies indicate that a mechanism to repair cavitation even under tension also exists in plants. So in this video, we have understood what we mean by the ascent of sap and what are the different theories which explain the ascent of sap in plants. We have seen vital force theories, we have seen physical theories and we have also discussed the transpiration pull or the cohesion tension theory which, has, which explains satisfactorily the ascent of sap in the tall trees as well as root pressure theory which explains the moment of water or upward transport of water or sap in small herbaceous plants. Hope you have understood this lecture. In future we will be seeing the transpiration and the moment stomatal moment and the factors affecting the transpiration. I hope you have understood this lecture well. Till the next lecture, be safe and be happy and thank you very much.